Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest on the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today I have Michael Graham on the line, and he is CEO of Maps People. Michael, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right, Michael. Um, so excited about today's topic. So we'll talk about um, indoor mapping for, you know, large stadiums and large spaces and, and corporate offices. I mean, amazing work that you guys are doing over at Maps People. So excited to get into this, but we'll start this episode the way we start them all um, with our Mission Matters Minute. So, Michael, we at Mission Matters, we amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, and experts. That's our mission. Michael, what mission matters to you? The mission matters to us is to help owners of large venues to earn more per square foot or to do more in less space, uh, meaning that we help large venue owner, owners of large mm -hmm. venues to for example, uh, sports venues or lots of uh, corporate offices to uh, earn more uh, from their space and uh, to save money, saving uh, area for the office desk and so on. Awesome. I'm excited to get further into that and um, especially your, you know, your go to market strategy, how you work with different OEM partners and also um, some of the things you're doing with SoFi Stadium um, and, and just some, some more things in there. I mean, it's really interesting stuff. The more I dug further and further into maps, people, it's just really innovative stuff. Um, but just to get us started. So tell us a little bit more about your background. Like how did you get started in business and, in, and on this path? I, my own background is a, as a surveyor, you know, the guys walking in the field in, in rubber boots and red and white sticks. But uh, yeah. and many years ago, I went into digital mapping mm -hmm. and, and that was starting with mapping for printed purposes. It was produced digital, but for printed purposes like the yellow pages and the, yeah. the tourist industry. And then we have the, the last uh, many years, we went, went through a number of disruptions yeah. from from uh, mapping for printed purposes to mapping for digital purposes like web and mobile, mm -hmm. and from having our own servers producing maps to being a partner of Google Maps. You can imagine when in 2005, when Google Maps came out, uh, we should consider beat them or join them. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was an easy question. So, so we joined them and became a Google Maps partner. And wow. then the last disruption was from from outdoor maps to indoor maps. Yeah. So that's the journey. What a, um, I mean, to me, it's amazing. And it's an amazing field. And it's something that it's, it's very niche, but doesn't get brought up too often. Um, and that is like, if you think about where mapping started, I mean, I don't know how far back do you want to go, right? From simple to like, you know, um, mapping new lands to mapping the United States, like all these things like of mapping and the progression, like, let's mm. just say the people that kind of has started this throughout the years, like who would have imagined we'd be where we're at right now with maps and now going indoors? You're, you're right. Uh, mapping has been uh, for, I don't know, many hundreds of years. <laughs> but uh, I think it has, uh, the last um, 15 years, it has changed our lives since, since yeah. uh, the start of Google Maps. But the fact is that it has changed our lives outdoor, but that's very little uh, or, or nothing indoor. And, yeah. and that's what we are diving into. And you're, and I mean, you starting out as, as a surveyor, like you had a certain passion for this. Like when I think about your career and how it's built up and like how you stay on the, on the cutting edge of really technology in this field, um, you know, there's some people that are watching this and that'll, you know, be thinking about different industries, whether it's to invest, whether it's, you know, as a career, can you just yeah. talk about maybe personally, like what mapping and this, this whole industry has meant to you? Cause I think it's fascinating. Yeah, but I've always always been very curious, uh, and uh, mm -hmm. I, starting out, uh, I like the, to be in outdoor, and and I like to to work with mathematics. So that was my own start of, of, of the career, and 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 that slowly led to to the digital part. I didn't mm -hmm. expect that I should work with with as an IT company when I when when I started uh, yeah. years back, but it turned out that we are now. In, in the front of a, a very, very small niche uh, of, mm -hmm. uh, of IT business. 
Yeah, it's amazing how how sometimes life works, right? Like you progress and then one day you wake up and you're like, wow, like that's a, like it's a body of work, right? It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So um, just going a little bit further, um, indoor mapping. I don't want to assume that everybody watching this maybe understands that concept. We've all, you know, Google Maps, I believe most people have used that, at least in the United States yeah. and other places. Um, so tell us a little bit more about just the concept of indoor mapping. You know, uh, outdoor, you have Google Maps, but, but yeah. indoor, you need to do something to produce a map indoor. So we, we, mm -hmm. did, we get cat data digital billing data from the venue owners. And we process each data and we put a floor plan of each floor level on top of, for example, Google Maps. Yeah. And then we produce what we call a network graph, which is a, a, a network of where you can move inside the building. So you can, you can calculate a route from A to B, not only outdoor, but from outdoor to the entrance and from the entrance to the specific room or the product on the shelf. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we, we have a, um, a database of searchable content. So you can search for the restroom, you can search for the coffee machine, or you can even search for Heinz ketchup on the shelf. So all searchable content. And the most, uh, I can say, uh, advanced now is that we add it to booking systems. For example, if you're uh, mm -hmm. in a corporate office, you have a system where you can book desk, you can book rooms, mm -hmm. and we add that booking system, and then you can get a visibility of where you should go when you book a certain desk. You can see yeah. where is the desk available, what meeting rooms is available around me, and also yeah. you can find your colleagues, because uh, a lot of corporate office, mm -hmm. they, are, they are implementing what they call smart office. Mm -hmm. They realize that, or they already know that office space is really expensive. And yeah. that's a lot of, of opportunity for optimization here. Mm. We are told by KPMG that one desk represents $500 spent per month. So wow. you can imagine if you can save a couple of percent of the desk at the office, it's a huge yeah. amount of money. And in that sense, COVID has actually helped us because you can see more and more offices are having their employees staying more at home. Mm -hmm. And then you, to, to optimize the usage of the office, you need to have some kind of system and you need to have some kind of visibility. Mm -hmm. And that's where we come into the play. Mm. Tell me a little bit more about like who can benefit. So I know you mentioned like, you know, corporate offices, like what does this look like? So is, it's for money savings, it's for resource planning. Like tell me a little bit more about who can benefit that you've seen. Yeah, the, the example of, of corporate office, that, that is for money saving and for having a more effective day. So yeah. if, if you're at the, the office, you don't need to spend a lot of time to find an available desk or find a meeting room. Mm -hmm. It's why, for example, uh, companies like JP Morgan, mm -hmm. they're using it for their huge offices globally where we are implementing mm -hmm. it for them. And, uh, and they are, of course, saving some money because they, they, they don't need to have that many desks anymore. So mm -hmm. it's a matter of efficiency and a matter of, of saving money in, in that mm -hmm. sense. Uh, other example is, is uh, airports. That's also mm -hmm. to have a better spend uh, by the fair, uh, square foot because yeah. uh, airports, they are actually some of the largest uh, malls in, in the world. So And they know uh, one person in one minute is equal to 15 cents spent. So wow. if they can keep the travelers in the shopping area uh, a couple of minutes more, they would they would spend more money and they the airport would earn more uh, because they, they are paid by the the revenue from the shops. Yeah. So these are the examples. And similar for for retail, if if retail can help you as a shopper to find your products easier. Uh, for example, I always struggle finding like Worcestershire um, uh, Worcestershire sauce. Yeah. <laughs> Where is that located? Is that Tomato? No. Is that? <laughs> no. I don't know where it's located. I don't either. There's no one to ask. So <laughs> if I can have a be uh, self service and and look it up in my app, I would, I would love to do that. Yeah. So that's that's a, a way by how how um, retail can benefit from it. Similar yeah. from universities, they are very huge complex uh, uh, mm -hmm. campuses. Finding your way around, finding available meeting rooms. It's a hassle. And, and these are yeah. examples of large, complex venues yeah. you can benefit from, from indoor mapping.
And it seems like, um, like when I when I think about possibility there for user mm -hmm. experience, it's almost bringing like the same type of um, you know user experience you'd want on a good website or something else. Like it's bringing it into the real world. Mm -hmm. So now you're you're actually living in a world, in my opinion, like this gives a better user experience with a lot of the things you mentioned interacting with. It, I don't know if I like this uh, that airport example though because they get me every time I come out with all the stuff I didn't necessarily want because the, the mapping work done me on that one they get me every time in the airport but um on the education side of things like universities i think that's yeah. really interesting yeah. like give me a little bit more about how like that could play out because a lot of universities it's a really um interesting use case yeah yeah and that of course is is uh, in in the first place that's for new students find their way around totally but yeah, and it's, it's so complex. But when you have been at, at a campus for, let's say, a couple of months, you might be used to where things are located. Yeah. But, but if it's, again, if it's connected to the, to the calendar system and booking system, and you can see a live availability of rooms and desks, that makes you use it every day. So wow. it's like, like the library. New. Library. Is, yeah. your, is somebody like, is there availability to sit in the area you want to or something like that? You're taking me back to, I can't say childhood, but uh, college age. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so these are, these are examples of, of being more effective and also getting better sales mm -hmm. uh, from the area and, and mm -hmm. sales that, that matters for, for sports that matters for, for airports and of course for shops. Um, yeah. yeah these kind of uh, industries. Yeah, and so especially retail. So if we're talking malls or things mm -hmm. like that, is that what we're talking about in retail? Or yeah. just even actually stores, right? Individual yeah. stores, like strip, when, when like anything, about, right? Yeah, when we talk about retail, that's, we see it in two dimensions. One is mm -hmm. malls, where you find your way to the specific shop in the mall. Yeah. But the even better uh, use case is uh, department stores, where you find your way to the product on the shelf. Mm -hmm. Because that makes much more sense. I imagine you, you've been often in a DIY shop. I don't know if you are doing it yourself, man, but uh, if you are, uh, you need to find some specific tools mm -hmm. and that's the one to ask. And you don't go there every day, so you don't mm -hmm. know where they're located. And uh, everyone needs help for, for doing that. And, mm -hmm. and also, that's an uh, analysis saying that when you leave a shop, mm -hmm. you, you miss 10 to 20% of what you have on your list. Mm. So if, if the shop owner can help you finding everything uh, you yeah. want to buy, that, uh, that gives a better revenue for him. Oh, you're speaking my language. There's nothing. Uh, if I didn't have to go down aisles so much, like that's kind mm -hmm. of some of the things when we when I think about some of the reasons why I do more of my some of my shopping online. Mm -hmm. That's part of it. Like I can't yeah. find stuff, and then and then it becomes easier. Like I've been in stores before where I can't find something. Mm -hmm. I go online and buy it just because I don't want to deal with yeah. trying to go find somebody or something else. Like, <laughs> like I just buy it online, and I'm like, I'll just wait, forget it. Like those last couple of items. Items, or maybe I go to a competitor online because I can't yeah. find it. So I get it. It's like making it easier for people to um, to to shop and just to interact mm -hmm. with it. That's right. So um, tell me a little bit more about the like just the the go to market strategy. Like how have you been able to? I mean, indoor mapping, lots of indoor spaces. Like how, how have you been able to really um, get this into the marketplace? Yeah. Well, we're located here in Denmark, and of course, we started with the western part of Europe. And we started with finding some really strong logos uh, and, and get them uh, into the business so we could use them as references. Yeah. And, and, and that's been doing very well. And then we, about four years ago, we started in the US, or five years ago in, in yeah. Austin. And we realized that strong band, brands in Europe doesn't say a thing in US. So we yeah. need to have strong band, uh, brands on board, uh, like uh, Golden State Warriors, uh, Minnesota Viking. SoFi Stadium, LinkedIn, uh, JP Morgan, these kind of brands. And now we're talking. And yeah. that, that's, that's how we start with, with direct sales. But having strong logos, we'd rather uh, prefer partner-based sales. Mm -hmm. So we are, we're an indoor mapping platform. And the way we scale the business is to find relevant partners who are delivering. For example, that could be booking systems for... Yeah or uh, corporate offices, or it could be be a web system for or a mobile system for stadiums. Yeah. And 
we try to find the right partners to who want to embed indoor mapping into their their product so that they can benefit from it and yeah. lots of these players i can tell you they don't want to do the indoor mapping stuff because it's a hassle mm. for them but that's the niche we are we are delivering to them yeah and, and that's how we are succeeding very much now finding right partners to scale the business mm -hmm. and these partners they are like us most of them software as a service yeah. companies so they are scaling their business very fast mm -hmm. and and we are scaling our sales through their uh, their sale as well and it seems like um you mentioned sofi stadium so when i think yeah. about like sports venues just in yeah. general like what's the possibilities there let's start kind of high level like what do you envision for working with stadiums because it seems like it'd be a big win yeah when you're a visitor at a, at a sports venue Maybe you want to start having a look at where your seat is located and on yeah. the stadium. And you could do that in an app or a web page uh, with mm -hmm. our systems. And when you uh, come there and you park your car, you need to find the best way to the right entrance. Yeah. And we can help with that as well, because that can be a hassle. Uh, I know that uh, SoFi Stadium, they have around uh, 20,000 parking lots around the stadium. Yeah. And and imagine it, 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 it could be a bit of a struggle to find the right entrance, but we, we can help with that. And mm -hmm. getting the right entrance, we can guide you to the seat and mm -hmm. uh, you're there. But it doesn't end there because when you are there, you want maybe to buy some merchandise or you go to a restroom or buy some drink and food. And yeah. we can help you uh, find your way to that as well. And if there is IoT system, that's a thing we haven't talked about, connecting to live sensors measuring yeah. things that could be the queue at the food store mm -hmm. uh, how long time do i need to wait to get yeah. my food so you can invest in, in the app what's the waiting time for the, yeah. the different different concession stands mm. and also some like like sofa stadium they have integrated to square so that you can order pay your food and get it delivered to the seat because what? Uh, <laughs> they don't know they know where you are lo you're located at your seat and, uh, oh my gosh! Yeah, and um, uh, we're told that th uh, thirty percent of the visitors they don't want to leave the seat because they are afraid of missing uh, yeah. out of the game. Totally, no, I can okay. totally imagine that. I didn't, I didn't know that they had that feature. That's that's pretty amazing. So yeah. you're sitting there, you're watching a game. You're like, you know, I want to leave my seat. I want, you know, I can it can it just come to me? So nor in the old, I guess in the old days, right? You wait for the the guy or girl um, walking down and, and mm -hmm. selling whatever they have, and you make a decision. You either want what they have or you don't. But you might want something that's in the booth or the, the vendor has, right? And you're sitting in your seat. So so order it on your app. They know where you're sitting. They find you. They bring it yeah. to you. Like that's yeah. that's amazing. Like, why wouldn't a stadium have that? Mm. Yeah, but it's 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 the direction we can see that more and more of our customers they are implementing sensors to to measure yeah. if there's someone in the meeting room. Uh, yeah. If could be no one shows up and the meeting room could be freed, mm -hmm. uh, queue lines and even temperature in rooms, uh, humidity, these kind of stuff is more and more integrated mm -hmm. uh, in the solution. And then make, makes it a very, very live system where you can yeah. you can benefit from from here and now, yeah, measures. Tell tell me a little bit more about the technology side of things. So you mentioned um, Internet of Things and just the possibility of where this can go. Like like, yeah. what do you see? Well, we see that more and more sensors are integrated, and that's the thing yeah. where we differ from some of our competitors that we already have a really strong backend that can handle millions of feeds per second and millions yeah. of requests per second. Yeah. Um, and as an example, we, we did, uh, we're doing uh, indoor map, and that's actually not indoor, but our, our solution is being used for US Open in golf. And you can imagine wow. the number of people using the app at the same time. Mm -hmm. that, is, that is tremendous. It's a huge amount of people. And we are not talking, we're talking about millions because it's not only the the visitors at the at the golf course but it's also people at home who are wow. using the app. so they are using the app and they are monitoring how the players are moving around so they can see well there's tiger woods and what how is he doing now and they're clicking on the map to see the stats about him so these kind of dynamic live data integrated into the map makes the usage much much more valuable 
no matter if you're on a stadium or in a corporate office or yeah. in a, in a in a store. Mm -hmm. No, I get it. I get it. And it just it just makes sense, like for usability and just for a, a better experience. What other sports do you see this kind of rolling out to? So you mentioned golf, of course. Um, mm. You mentioned uh, SoFi Stadium. Like mm. what other sports do you think um, there's room to integrate this into? But I think any kind of stadium sports, yeah. because it's, it's sports where you have a huge audience around you. Mm -hmm. um, and and we're, we're mostly talking about the large venues. So... Uh, mm -hmm. If you have less less than ten thousand uh, seats, I, I don't think it makes any sense. But but mm -hmm. there's a huge number of stadiums uh, having more seats. Like mm -hmm. like in Europe, Europe, we did the UEFA. That's the the soccer tournament uh, thing to place last year. We did those twelve stadiums for 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 that tournament. Wow. It's awesome. And then in terms of like corporate spaces, like how large or small, like what type of um, what type of clients does some a, a solution like this make sense for? Well, we have done direct sales for a, a number of very large uh, corporates, but we are doing with partners. We are doing smaller corporates as well mm -hmm. because our partners they are typically a partner who are, do, uh, who are selling a some kind of booking system and yeah. it's an Internet of Things sensor. So. They equip the office with sensors below the desk so they can see if it's occupied yeah. or if it, it might be booked and no one shows up and then it can be freed again. So these kind of, of partners, they mm -hmm. might sell to smaller offices as well. And, and, and that's fine for us yeah. because we have this one partner who are reselling their solution with our indoor mapping embedded to maybe hundreds of their customers. Mm. So we don't care if they are selling to smaller customers, but mm -hmm. we cannot handle smaller customers direct. So we prefer yeah. the, the large ones. But through partners, they can scale it wider out in the systems and reach out to smaller offices as well. So uh, I, I have to ask this. So, Michael, so you, uh, I mean, obviously, from the, from the early days of, of your career in mapping, right, as a surveyor, um, to now indoor mapping on the cutting edge of, of really technology mm -hmm. and, and this niche. I mean, what's next? I mean, what's next for you? What's next for the technology yeah. and uh, for maps people? Well, we are looking at a, a number of new technologies here and, and that's mm -hmm. uh, augmented reality. We're looking at oh, 3D, wow. 3D and, and, and also we're looking at, at more integration mm -hmm. to new IT stuff, uh, IoT centers, Internet yeah. of Things. So, so these are some of the topics that we are investigating and we will come out with some really nice new stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. We want to be kind of the, the apple for indoor navigation. So that's what we are aiming for. And, and to be honest, we, we aim for the, the leadership in this niche. It's a very mm -hmm. small niche and we know pretty much all our competitors here. Yeah. And, and we have a strong position now, but we, we need to look for new technologies new uh, areas to cover to uh, get this position in the end. Amazing. And uh, so if somebody's watching this and they want to learn more about MAPS people, whether they're a potential partner, right, as you mentioned, um, for, your, for in the overall go-to-market strategy, like people that maybe in, in SaaS or something like booking and other things that where it makes sense or yeah. um, corporate offices, stadiums. I mean, lots of different use cases that you, you shared with us today. Mm -hmm. Like overall, how do people um, connect and, uh, and learn more? Yeah, of, of course, they can learn more from our website. That's, that's the step one. And then yeah. reach out to us because and that's a, a form that they can they can reach out to us on the website and, yeah. and we will pre pretty fast to reach out to them. Awesome. Sure. And we'll put, and, and just for the audience, we'll put the website and everything else uh, in the show notes so that uh, you can just click right on it and head right on over. And uh, speaking to the audience, uh, if this is your first time with Mission Matters, <laughs> um, definitely uh, we're a platform that's all about um, really amplifying the stories and bringing mm -hmm. you stories from entrepreneurs, executives, um, experts, and really just people that are out there making a difference, that are innovative, that are pioneering, and that are really 
um, bringing some to the marketplace. If that's the kind of content you like, we definitely welcome you to hit that subscribe button because we have many more mission-based uh, executives um, coming up for you, and we don't want you to miss a thing. And uh, Michael, really, it has been a pleasure. I'm, uh, I'm excited. I haven't been to SoFi Stadium in, uh, in, in a bit, but now I know when I make that order, um, I'm, I'm going to be thinking of you every time. And everybody that watches is, why is that possible? It's possible <laughs> because of maps, people. That's right. And uh, as I see just, you know, things evolving when I'm in a building, I mean, next time the airport gets me, whatever, I'm going to maps people help them with this one. So, so again, thank you for coming on the show. It's been awesome. It's been a pleasure being here. Thank you.